Today, we're going to be attempting to become the richest person in the city of Whiterun without ever leaving the cozy confines of the beautiful and iconic city in Skyrim. Help me! Our main goal of this challenge is to obtain 10,000 gold using whatever means necessary, but we can never leave the city at any point or the challenge is a complete failure. Do you have a place I can live? No, <laughs> I'm homeless. This is a true rags to riches challenge, so we have to start this run completely naked without a single septum to our name in an effort to answer the question. Can you play Skyrim without leaving Whiterun? Now the start to this challenge is easy enough. We hit the intro, we make a character, and we console command over to Whiterun as soon as our bonds are cut. Get used to the outside, as this is the only fresh air we're gonna get for the entire challenge. We will take your sick, your weary, and your naked here at Whiterun. For reference, because this was live streamed, here's what the stream saw. I'm playing your game in the dumbest way possible. And here's what you'll be seeing. I'm too ugly for YouTube these days. Now that we're in the city, we have to get some starting cash to invest in our locally produced empire. Clothes are optional at this point because showing as many citizens our gangly, naked, and probably smelly body is important for our villain origin story. Could you spare some change for a naked man? Not sure you should be walking around naked. Maybe some other time I'll reveal your destiny. Hmm? Unless there's a Chippendales in town, I don't think there's much in store in my destiny. Now there's a few things we can check off our white run to-do list right away. There's plenty of barrels we can sift through for minimal profit. All right, we're up to 15 gold. We're practically loaded. Plenty of plants all around town so we can get started with alchemy. That's a fine potion you've put together. And we can beat the piss yeah. out of Uthgird, yeah. taking her 100 gold and even recruiting her as a follower. Although I think we fought a little too hard because she never seemed to recover from our battle. Uthgird, get up! <laughs> I've never seen that happen before. We can also join the companions right up the road because once we do so, plenty of stuff can just be straight up robbed from them and sold completely legally. I'm still trying to figure out why Skior let you in in the first place. It's ethical theft. You might be asking yourself why I haven't just fully committed to abusing alchemy to achieve my goal. Simple answer, I will. But that's also boring. You see, when I originally started this challenge, yes, the original goal was to reach a certain number of gold, but that became too simple too static, and frankly too boring of a story to tell. I wanted to experience the most I possibly could without leaving Whiterun. I want to stretch this city to its limits, break the logic, and drive myself crazy hearing the same lines of dialogue and watching the same NPCs doing the same things every single day, harvesting the same plants and crafting the same potions, leveling as many skills as I possibly can given the limited circumstances that I have, and reach as high of a level as I can before I eventually burn myself out. I don't just want to answer the question, can you play Skyrim without leaving Whiterun? I want to answer the question, how much Skyrim can you play without leaving Whiterun? Now that we've assimilated into the populace and have some gold to our name, we can go complete the most Skyrim quest available that starts and ends in town. Do you believe in mighty Arcade? No. My amulet, I misplaced it in the catacombs. This is the only dungeon we have, so if your copy of Skyrim only comes with Whiterun installed, this is the most fun you're gonna have the entire time. After ignoring this pink floating rock, the most thrilling adventure available to us has been wasted. Oh, so sometimes we have to create our own adventures. Never should have come here. Why is he on my side? What? What? <laughs> this is far from the strangest NPC behavior we'll see, by the way. My real strategy here is to obtain a low bounty so I can level up some combat skills, since there aren't any roaming bandits or dragons in the Oops It's All White Run edition of Skyrim. At this point, I'm still broke. Don't know if you remember that part, so I begin relying on a combination of gross nuisance around town in an attempt to train my skills. Come on! Come on! and alchemy abuse so I can buy more training to further my dominance over the population of Whiterun. I could go into a whole lot of detail on alchemy because it really was an important part of this challenge, but honestly, I'd really rather not bore you with all the details. I just found a potion that sold for a lot, waited for Adrian's inventory to refresh, and then contemplated committing myself after hearing So you're interested in my potions and ingredients? Over 200 times. Everything aside from alchemy though, now that's when this experiment got fun. <laughs> <I'm being attacked. laughs> oh, Jesus, I even got the Jarl attacking me. In short, a crap load of sneak spamming in the guard barracks, an unbelievable amount of spamming the muffle spell to not only make our sneak more effective, but to also easily level up illusion, which you can get to level 100 in maybe 30 minutes if you're dedicated, and pretty soon after a few perk points and level ups, it was time to tear down that sacrilegious statue to Talos in the middle of town, because I am the only god here. I own Whiterun at this point. And yes, as a result of our alchemy abuse, we did in fact reach our goal of 10,000 gold. This is where this challenge moves into phase two. 
We're not just trying to become the richest person in Whiterun financially. We want to become the richest person in Whiterun mentally. We need to dominate the psyche of the Whiterun populace, which I will explain how to do using the famous and often credited Dennis system. The first step we've already covered, that's demonstrating value by crafting potions, joining the companions, and completing a quest. We've proved to the city of Whiterun that we are a capable individual who belongs in this town. We've gotten our trade skills to the point where if we leave, the economy of Whiterun likely collapses. Step two is to engage physically, which I've shown some of, but we need to go more in depth. Ah, to come here. Oh, sh oh. Sh the security in Whiterun is terrible. Shameful is what it is. Ah! Some splinter cell action, Sam Fisher. Oh. No one noticed. Hey, those are my plants, that's my territory. Being an assassin is all about the right angles. You have to be a master of your own geometry. Another wanderer here to lick my father's boots. Good job. Oh God, he's resisted it by insulting us, run. Stand it. Yeah, cry me a river. What done? I agree, what's done is done. Something I said? After a while of physically engaging with the town's guards and citizens from dark corners, testing the waters of what you can get away with, and systematically depleting the city's natural plant life for your own scientific experiment, it's time to move on to... If the previous step is to be followed correctly, then you should see what I see. No guards, no plant life, an overall population decrease, and a drop in sustainability of life means that you, and you alone, will drive those around you mad with desire. My... my parents died. And now I'm all alone. Uh, I, I... Nothing like a good adventure. <laughs> I know nothing about that, but I could adopt you if, uh, if you want. Really? No, <laughs> I'm homeless. Now look, I know what people might be thinking right now. You're a complete sociopath! Don't interrupt. Okay. This is a scientifically proven method, all right? You create the problem and the game seeks a solution from you, then we can't always explain what they're looking for. Aw, oh, that was illegal? It's my cow! Fine, I'll go to jail. Two seconds later. Whoa, what the f- Whoa, why? Whoa, what the hell? What? Whoa! Why? Why, Yorland? Bit of an editor's note here, but I did mention that there were no guards in town or plants spawning anymore, and that's completely true. Towards the end of this whole thing, I'd killed so many guards and taken the plants out of the town so many times, I think something in the game just broke, and they completely stopped spawning. Anyway, on to step four. So you've brought Whiterun to its knees, and for reasons you can't explain, the game is continually throwing scenarios your way to try and rope you back in. Good. That means the system is working as intended, but this next part is incredibly important. The game is going to continue throwing these scenarios your way, but you need to be sure to not play along by their rules. Ergo, neglect them emotionally. I've been looking for you. Oh, inheritance! It is with great regret that we inform you of Uthgird the Unbroken's death. Just for the record, I did not start this fight, it was another case of the AI being weird. The Arl's court has levied an amount of- This game has tax?! Oh hey, Uthgird's house. This is our house now. Oh, nice! I actually have a home. You're not supposed to be in here. Oh, what the fuck are you gonna do about it, Frothar? Last warning. Leave now. Okay, 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 I'm, I'm leaving. I'm here to explain why you are standing so close to a dead body with your weapon drawn. Force of habit, I guess. And this force of habit, does it also compel you to murder? Has anybody ever seen this dialogue before? Has a anybody? I'm not answering any questions. All right, you are now under arrest. What? Hired th- what? Faithfully carry out my request to teach a lesson to the thief Shady Sam. Gerda? Gerda? Who's Gerda? What? You're now a property owner, the main suspect in a murder investigation, and the castle servant is even putting out hitman contracts in your name. You're crushing this whole thing. I know what you're thinking. This is all just a big stretch for me to make a joke and make all this fit under the context of an Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode from 2009. Well, you know what I think? The penultimate step in this process is crucial. You're going to need to do several things in order to give the remaining Whiterun NPCs some semblance of meaning in their lives, to keep them going so that their disappointment on your departure is maxed out. Ah! Dead body! <laughs> oh. What happened? What happened? Rush guard for sale. He really can't get over it. Did I accidentally kill one of his family members? He hasn't stopped looking at them. If anybody is obsessed with death, it's him. What's the fight? 
Building a sacrificial pyre of dead bodies in the middle of town for people to worship is one way to inspire hope. But with no guards respawning and wandering around town, it's time to make the citizens finally rise up like the gamers they really are against the one guard left in town. I'd strongly advise against such foolishness. So let's wake them up a little. Come on, guards. I have a 40 gold bounty. Do something about it. Put me in jail. That's right, Mia. I run this entire town. Come on, Adrian, you got this. Oh, shit. <laughs> He's the only guard left, and Frenzy actually works on him. No way, I've got the whole town against him now. Oh, you've got. No, 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 get away from him. I don't think you want to fight him. Oh, man down. <laughs> they realized what I was doing, what I was here to do. The townspeople are rising up while well, they're also getting murdered. We now control the economy, the lives, and the minds of those who are still alive. And with no law to stop us, it's time to completely break the brain of every remaining Whiterun citizen at the exact same time, while still remaining the object of their desire. Wait, 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 hey. Hold on, no, I'm, I'm gonna mess up your dinner. Yeah, there you go, but you got potatoes, and cheese, and bread, and everything flying all around. <laughs> wait, hold on. No, they won't cross. I'm practically invincible. I own their minds. Look at this. Ready? They're going to get close to me and whoop. <laughs> nice try, Farkas. Come on. Come on. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to get everybody in the palace to chase me down, and I'm going to see if that works. That would be true domination. I would control everyone in the entire city at that point. So let's get, yeah, we got to get them all the way into this circle. We're going to have them follow us all the way back up. Let's just run around them. Everyone's joined in now. This is, the, this is the majority of the population of town at this point. Okay, if we're going to collect everybody in town, we have to run to... Okay, uh, how the fuck am I getting out of here now? Uh, okay, this is a lot of people. Go. Front door. Come on, everybody. We're going for a ride. <laughs> so we have now the majority of the remaining population of town, save for, you know, anybody who may be in home or asleep, which I doubt is any of them. Not a lot of them own property anymore. I made sure of that. Whoop. Hey, watch it with the fireballs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and back. And boom. <laughs> Backtrack. How did he outsmart us? I'll rip you in half. I think it's safe to say at this point, I can't completely control the town of Whiterun, but if I can bend the will of their minds, to follow my exact orders, or at least very closely follow my orders, then I can control the city. If you've been following the very scientific steps that I've laid out for you, then you too can control the population of Whiterun. But there's one final step that I haven't given you any information on, and that's to separate the true power. True power.